So this tutorial is going to be about Ableton's Looper. The Looper can be used in a number of different contexts. It can be used to uh, be like a storage device, right? So if you're recording, say, I don't know, a guitar or just something live coming into Ableton, um, so a live signal coming into Ableton, you can record like a one bar loop or a half a bar, or two bars or four bars or whatever. And then basically what will happen is the looper will cycle through those loops for you. And then you can add another layer on top of that and another layer on top of that and another layer on top of that, essentially. And then what you're doing is you're starting off with something that could be quite basic, but you're creating a more complex uh, kind of accumulation of loops through the one looper. Now you can have multiple loopers set up as well. So for example, in one channel, you could have a looper set up. You're recording some sounds in and then you leave that as it is, move on to the next one, record more sounds in there. You can do that as well. Um, the way that I'm actually using it is a bit of that. And then I also want to show you how to kind of get a wee bit creative with the outcome. So essentially, I'm going to be using a lot of these recordings. Um, you can actually turn these recordings into audio samples very quickly. So it's a good way to create your own samples too. Um, essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use uh, one sound to create multiple sounds and then how to manipulate them in some more detail to create uh, maybe an instrument out of those sounds or just to layer certain sounds up together. And that could be the, the, the kind of starting point for a track. The way that the looper works, I think it, uh, it it's a different feel from how you would normally work with loops in Ableton. It takes a wee bit of time to get your head around because there's a lot of stuff crammed into the one thing. Um, the looper basically looks like this as well. It's down here on the uh, bottom left hand corner. So I basically want to show you uh, a couple of techniques that you can use with this just to kind of demystify it a wee bit. And then I'm going to show you how to uh, play, play in live but also how to basically take a, a sample that's already in Ableton, something you've dragged into Ableton and then kind of mess around with it a wee bit. So this is really good for pitching stuff down and pitching stuff up. And you can do this already with an Ableton, but to my ears, the way that the looper pitches uh, certain sounds, they sound much nicer. You know, whatever algorithm that they used uh, the, the pitch, uh, things up and down, it sounds very, very nice compared to some of the other algorithms with an Ableton. Now, I'm assuming this might even be using one of the algorithms with an Ableton. I'm not sure, but this just gives me um, more control over pitch and stuff uh, to get the desired sound that I want uh, compared to things, you know, most things that I've been using at least recently anyway. So I'm going to show you how to speed things up and down. I'm going to show you how to basically uh, increase and decrease lengths. I'm going to, there's just so many things. So I'm going to let you hear a, a thing that I started and essentially this is one guitar piece uh, duplicated multiple times. So we'll have a wee look at this. And essentially what's going on here is I set up this channel with a looper on it. So let's solo this. So this is what I recorded in. It's nothing special and it's not even exactly on time. I'm not exactly a guitar player, but I do have one here, so I thought I'd experiment with it. That's really how I make music. I experiment and explore and see what happens. So now I'm going to move on to what I've done after that. So this is now that same loop, but I've added a wee bit of distortion. I've pitched it down an octave. I've added a kind of uh, eighth note repeat on it using an auto pan and just synced the phase like so and so it's much more rhythmical now and then I've just made this mono because it's a bass sound and I always have a tuner in here as well and that's just to basically make sure that I'm in key that's it um, again I'm not a player so um, I need all the help that I can get okay so that's that um, I'm gonna let you hear the next sound now which is the same sound but it'll sound different okay so what I've done here is I haven't pitched the sound down. Same notes. And then I've added an echo and a bit of reverb and some nice tape saturation, right? But if I take these things off, you know, it still sounds okay. All right, but with them on, I could even add that saturation before the echo. Yeah, okay. Right, so we've got two sounds there. Let's bring in the third one. Same sound. And 
I've pitched that up uh, an octave. And then I've added a different delay time on that, I think. Yeah, so it's quarter note delay here and eighth note delay here. Some more tape saturation. And then I'll bring in the last sound. So this is the same as the, this one. Okay, but what I've done is I, I've uh, basically um, done a bit of microwing. So I'm going to show you how to do all this as well. So if I just hop over here, I've got a button that I can press here. And what that's going to do, I just do uh, this. <clears throat> I'm going to, the, the basically the length of this loop, I'm going to half it. So I have this one here. So now you can see there's the one bar. So each one of these squares represents a quarter note. I'm going to half it, half it again. So it's just more grainy now. So, for context, let's bring in a beat here as well. This reminds me of like kind of early DJ Shadow, <clears throat> kind of hip hop stuff. Really, really interesting sound. And all of this was created with this. <laughs> yeah, okay. It sounds really bad now to listen back to it after listening to the rest. So, does that seem interesting? Um, obviously, I've used a guitar here for a reference, but uh, you can use anything you want. So, I'll start off first of all. I'm going to uh, kind of split this into two sections. So, section one, we're going to just record again a guitar because that's what I have here in. And then what we'll do next is we'll record some sounds into the looper via Ableton. So, you know, a sample or a synth or whatever, it doesn't really matter. And we'll incorporate that into. So we'll crack on here and we'll start off now with, um, <clears throat> I'll just uh, maybe group these together like so, and then just knock it off here. Okay, so we've, we've got that as our reference. So, uh, Bear with me here a wee second, just to sort this out. Uh, yeah, I think that's it now. Okay. I'll just keep these drums as well, <clears throat> just for a metronome, I guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new audio track. So, <clears throat> you know, if you were to do this, you'll need an audio interface and a guitar or something else. It could be a synth. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to my external synth here. So, ex or sorry, uh, external sound card. <clears throat> which is, um, it's just a mixing desk essentially that doubles as an audio interface. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm literally just connecting the guitar to that. So my audio interface is uh, this thing here, <clears throat> excuse me. So essentially I'm coming in here on channel two and um, I'm just recording that then directly into Ableton. So let's have a look at that. So, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> right, I think I'm okay now. So, um, audio, channel, external input, and then channel two, because that's what I'm connected to. Okay, so what do I need to do next? Well, I need to lift the guitar and start playing, but before I do that, I'm going to get a looper. Now, the first time you look at this thing, it's going to be very, very daunting if you haven't seen it before. I would suggest just looking at the Able Ableton Manual and a few other tutorials as well, just to kind of get familiar with it. I think that will definitely help. But I'm going to talk you through uh, how I use it, but it can be used in a number of different ways. I think the best way to do that, though, is to play something in and then have them have a mess around with it. So first of all, um, I'm going to just cover a couple of things. This is going to be your main button here, right? This is a multifunction button, and it allows you to play, record, and overdub all at the one time. So I'm assuming you know what play means. I'm assuming you know what record means. Overdub maybe not so basically if you have a recording already in this looper you can record another layer on top and that's what overdubbing is so you're just kind of over layering uh what's already there you know so think of that sound right and if i want to overdub over that sound i can put another sound 
and then that plays back the yellow, right? So the, they're all, all of those layers are kind of sandwiched together within the one recording. So you can do that within the one looper. It's really interesting. There's, there's you know, hardware loopers as well. Like I actually have a few here. Uh, I tend not to use them. This one's really good, so I, I can use that quite a lot. So you can basically use this button for a lot of things, all right? And then when you've recorded in here, um, you've got options to undo and clear what's been recorded into the into the looper. There's a thing called a buffer, and it's essentially just a, a thing that allows you to record into. So think of it as like a a holding, you know, you know, something that you can record onto, and then basically you can erase that as well. Think of a tape or something like that that you can, or a hard drive, you know, you can put something onto it and you can erase it when you want. A buffer's like that. So what you can do then as well is you've got your quantization. This is important. Um, I'm just setting this to global quantization. So essentially this is going to play uh, in time with the, the track that I have. So if I have drums like so, it's going to play along with that. Now, if you play out of time, it won't. But the, the cycle that you set here, you know, if it's a one bar loop, um, it will go, that one bar loop will go in time with the global tempo, if that makes sense. Now, uh, here is your record length. You can record one bar or, as you know, 16 bars or variable lengths here if you want as well. I'm just going to keep it to one bar to keep it straightforward, right? So you're saying, I want, I want this looper to record a one bar loop and then I want it to, you've got a few options here, play or overdub and play, okay? So, um... I'll go through this in more detail as we go along. Uh, song control, um, we can start the song when uh, we play here if we like, or uh, we can start and stop the song from here as well if we want. Uh, you also have tempo control. So this is uh, set and follow song tempo, all right? You can just go follow song tempo. I'm gonna use follow song tempo for now. So my tempo is set at 84 BPM. So essentially this looper is gonna follow that tempo. But what you can do, if you want to, is you can start playing uh, with, you know, loops in here and it'll kind of analyze those loops and work out what the tempo is and then set that as your global tempo for your whole track. So there's two ways of working there. Um, for me, this, you know, just follow the song tempo works for me because I've already things in here and I know the tempo that I want. But sometimes that might not be the case. So as I say, there's a lot going on here. And I'm going to just stop there for a wee second and pause. And then I'm going to grab a guitar and we should start this now before I explain anything else. And I'll explain the rest as we go along. I'm going to show you how to MIDI um, some preferences up to this too. So like I have a MIDI controller uh, here. So it can be any, like if another MIDI controller here and I've got a MIDI keyboard, doesn't matter what controller it is, as long as it's MIDI enabled, you can MIDI map any of these functions here to any of the functions within the looper if you choose to do so. So for example, uh, I could have like this fader map to the feedback within the looper or this to kind of start recording, stop recording, uh, undo, clear, and so on and so forth. So we'll look at all of that too. Right, okay, so I'm gonna grab the guitar here now. And essentially, I'm gonna use the drums as my metronome. So again, bear with me here, folks. I am not a guitar player at all. Um, let's see, just take the camera back a wee bit there so you can see what's going on. Um, okay, there we go. Thankfully, I have a wide angle lens on this. Right, excellent. So you're hearing that through um, the microphone here at the minute. You're not hearing it through Ableton. So let's set that up first of all. So uh, we need to set this to monitor the input. Okay, so this is mo live monitoring now, right? So. And I'm actually coming in channel one, not channel two. My mistake. Okay, so we should see that now. And hear it. You will hear a wee bit through this mic as well. Not really much you can do about that. Okay, so I'm looking at that signal and I'm gonna just get a wee limiter in here and I'm gonna just increase that level a bit. And then the limiter set to um, just under clipping so it should stop any, any, any clipping occurring as well. Okay, there you go, beautiful stuff. So what I'm gonna do is, again, 
I'm um, coming in channel one, so external input, channel one, monitor the input, and then arm the track. All right, that's basically what you need to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press play in Ableton now and get this recording. Now, um, let me just show you that in Ableton as well. So external input, channel one, monitor the input, Okay, and then arm the track. So when I start playing in here now. Right, we can hear that. Okay, so the next thing then, um, just maybe split the screen here. Uh, like, let's see, uh, best one would be this one. Or... All right, I want you to see this looper uh, in detail because it is hard to follow. Okay, so first things first, if I want to record now, um, I've got a couple of options, but I'm gonna use this function here to record, okay? So when I press record, you see this lighting up in red, and then it goes blue. Blue's for overdub, right? So I didn't record anything in there when it was red, that's fine, it doesn't matter. Because we're set to overdub, It's we, it'll just, basically put something in when we're revving, okay? So, one, two, three, four. Okay, so if I wanted to stop recording now, but still keep playing, I press this, and now that changes to yellow, right? So this is just, I can start playing stuff back here, over the top, and what I'm gonna do is uh, just take that level down a wee bit for starters. And keep that handy. Okay, so. Right, so essentially I'm gonna get another note in here now. Right, so something like this. So if I want to record that in, I've got a micro button set up for that to happen. All right, so let me show you that. And so it's this button here. So I'm gonna hit this, and then that's gonna arm the recording again. That's it's micro the other one. <laughs> Be careful with that actually. Uh, so I'll just do I'll just do it manually here. So what I'm gonna do is just hit it here and then go back to that note again. And so you can hear that in there now. So again I can just click here and start practicing something else. so I can practice on something else. the last part that I've just played in there, it doesn't sound great, it's out of, out of time. So what I can do is I can press undo here and it'll just undo the last layer. Okay, now when we're in yellow, we're in playback mode. Remember that, if you see yellow, it's playback mode. So I'm gonna just do another wee practice now and see if I can get something else.
Okay, so here we go. It's not exactly in time. I'm gonna just undo it again. And then that goes into playback mode and then I can click on overdub. Again, so again, or sorry, um, yellow is playback, blue is overdub. So I can play away here now and it won't record anything in because of the way I have it set up. Fantastic way to do things. So you can just practice and mess around. So if I start uh, putting an echo in there now, how beautiful is that? You know, I'm going to just put the guitar down here now. Kind of sounds like a synth. So that's us playing in live. So let's see what we can do with this sound now. So we can just stop it here a wee second as well, and we can you know play it again if we need to. Um, you know, it still stores that information in the buffer that we were chatting about earlier on. So what we can do with this now is we can leave it as is, and I can duplicate this. So Command and D. Or control and D, whatever system you're on. And so we have to play this down here to hear it. Okay. So let's bring both in. Right, so it's going to be the same thing. But what I want to do is I want to change the speed. And I'm going to take it down an octave. So basically, you can change the speed manually here. Uh, with the speed knob, or you can go up or down an octave. Okay, so let's try going down an octave. Now it clearly takes longer to get through the uh, sample when you're playing it slower, right? So let's have a listen to this. Okay, so you can clearly hear that. Now we can counteract that sometimes by essentially um, changing the loop length, right? So if I go here to length, we can divide it by two. stop both of them a wee second and sometimes it's good to take off the echo when you're doing this as well just so you can kind of hear what you're doing all right so that's as close as you're going to get it now you don't have to do that i can have this again just to experiment and explore yeah cool might even just leave that there So I'm going to go back to the original one, I'm going to duplicate that again, and this one, I'm going to just drag this out to the end, um, I'm going to go down uh, two octaves, right, let's give it a go, and then I'm going to press play. Now you can leave the length as it is if you want, if you're happy enough with the way that these samples kind of interact with one another. Or you can change the length. And then stop and start. The only thing I would mention is sometimes you get some um, overlap there uh, with the sample and you hear some clicking at the end so just be aware of that if you if that does happen you can actually just drag the sample out and fix it i'll show you how to do that shortly so i'm just going to keep it like this Yeah, I think it's based on the fact that we've taken it down to octaves more than anything. That's fine. We can work with that. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing some of these samples in now again with uh, Echo. So 
So this is kind of annoying me a wee bit. Um, what I'm going to do is, you can actually, let me show you this. You can actually just drag a copy of this out. Uh, like so, when it creates a sample. But what I've noticed is, let's play it back and listen. It doesn't actually, um, you know, if you pitch it down, it doesn't actually play that. Or it doesn't actually record that into the recording that you pull out. That's the sound that I want. It's not giving me that. So, um, let's see here a second. I'm going to just delete this a wee second. And I'm going to go back to this one. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate that again, right? And then I'm going to take that down an octave again, right? Let's have a listen now. Oh, we need to play. There we go. We've gotten rid of that click. I think it's because we shortened the length and then uh, made it longer again. Beautiful. Okay. Sounds. Um, let's have a listen. So, like, you know, without getting into ones too much, uh, but we can do so much with this as well. Like, first thing that I'm thinking of is a phaser. I change it to space, uh, three poles. Bring up the envelope a little, and the LFO amount. movement of the sound. I could do far more than that too but I'm not going to right now. Um, it's just like you can go as many ways as you want. This sound though I'm going to duplicate this again and just remember you need to go in here to play it or else you won't be getting any sound. So I'm going to take this and pan this over to the other side. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse the sound start again. So then maybe go into this nice uh, reverb and delays and maybe just go in and make sure I'm not taking too many low ends into that. A bit of wobble, not necessary but we were here. sound in here is, you know, if we, if we were to turn on a metronome there and have a listen to it by itself, it's not on time, right? So what we could do is we could open up another audio track here, and this is, you know, uh, it's called 11 Audio, so what we could say is Audio From 11 Audio. And now that will record that sound in there as audio. So this is a way to get around Dragon out here and not getting the um, the you know the reduction in speed and also you know any reversal or anything like that so this is just a way around it so we just record it in uh, in real time so we can see that so we only need a one bar loop but I'm gonna do two bars because the phaser goes from uh, left to right here so it's nice to have two bars okay so right click and crop the sample so what we could do now if we want to is we could just go right click here and set 1.1 so that kind of should sort out our timing issue so that's right on the one and right on the two or oh i'm listening to the wrong one far better okay so what i can do now is just get rid of that one
Loads more we can do here as well. <clears throat> um, let's go for just a wee bit of saturation. Turn off the metronome. Oh, make that a two bar loop maybe. You know, and there's, there's not much to this um, in the sense that, you know, this is one guitar, one a one bar guitar loop. Sounds really weird when you say that, but that's basically what we're looking at. So um, this is a way to play live in. Um, I've shown you now as well how to kind of drag loops out, but just be wary when you do that. If you're pitching stuff up and down, it doesn't seem to um, incorporate that into what you drag out. There might be a way around that, I'm not too sure, but uh, I haven't found it as of yet anyway. So just be aware of that <clears throat> and um, if you need to get those pitch changes just record it into uh, another channel um, so we've worked out how to kind of change tempo uh, the overdub version as well we've looked at that um, we've looked at how to do and undo certain things but say that if i want to uh, macro this now to a midi keyboard so um, i don't have to sit and click a mouse well that's really easy to do as well so um say if like this is the main one well actually you know what i'll do i'll just grip this out of the way a wee second okay so grip that and then just get that away a wee second turn it all off okay so we're going to have a few different versions here um but essentially if i want to go now to open up another audio track like so and just bring in another looper again and uh let's go for looper and for some reason I can't find it <laughs> so liver okay so we have that there so external input channel one monitor the input so we're ready to go now with this guitar again now what i'm going to do is before i go any further i want to go into uh, midi mode so that's command or control and m m for midi but you can also do that just up here at the top just by clicking here so essentially what i want to do now is I want to use this MIDI uh, controller here um, to basically uh, map uh, to the looper on screen here, okay? So you get the idea. This is what we're going to do. Right, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to just use this last channel here because I know I've not mapped anything to that yet. So first of all, uh, S, I want that. Uh, I'm going to click here, first of all, on this, uh, this multifunction tool. And again, if I click that, we now have a number here, and that's illustrating. I'll just show you that. That's illustrating here now. Uh, essentially, um, I'm trying to find the right camera. It's illustrating that that's now linked. Okay, so that's that. So the next one down, then I want to undo, and then the next one down, I want to clear. So record. Uh, overdub play that's what this button does record overdub and play because again the button that i've linked to is a multi-function button and we'll look at that now in a second the next one down then um essentially if i just come out of key mode here oh, or come out of midi mode uh this is an undo button so this will undo layers at a time if i make a mistake or if there's something i'm not happy with and then this bottom one here will completely clear this buffer okay so we'll look at that in context now in a wee second um, i'm going to record one bar and then again, I've got this set to overdub. As soon as it goes to at the end of one bar, I can overdub, but I can just have a plan if I want, and then I can activate the overdub down here. It doesn't really matter. Whatever kind of suits the job that you're looking to do. Um, gonna set this to follow song tempo, and we can start the song with this as well, that's fine. Okay, so the other thing that I can do then as well is I can, you know, kind of mess around with the speeds if I want. Um, I can, oh, there's loads of stuff I can do, um, reverse, so maybe what I'll do over here is I'll go back in um, to MIDI mode, so Command and M, um, and then what I'll do is I'll uh, use this next section, so this is to, uh, let's go multiply, divide, and then uh, the speed, up, speed, down. 
right? There's loads of stuff here. Now on the left hand side, we can set minimum and maximum values. I'm not gonna do that, but you can do that here. So if you wanna fine tune uh, what you're doing there, you can do that. And you can also swap what's going on here as well. So if something goes down, you can set it to go up and so on and so forth. Okay, right, so I'm happy enough for that. Um, just come out of MIDI mode again now. And essentially, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the guitar again. Trying not to break anything in the process. Ah, right, okay. Can't complain, I've got much more space than what I uh, used to have. Right, so. Oh, by the way, tuner is always a good thing if you can't play guitar. <laughs> Pretty much in tune, that's fine. Right, okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, uh, that's it, recording. I'm not even gonna bother doing anything, just to show you what happens next. Now that's set to play, and that's because uh, I have uh, this function here set to play rather than overdub, all right? But then if I hit that same button again, we're now ready to go into play mode. Right, just remember blue is playback and yellow is overdub. Now, I don't like that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press undo. Right, so it's now back in yellow mode, which is playback mode. So if I just press that again, it's ready to record. Two, three, four. Okay, I'm not entirely happy with it, but it's fine for now. So uh, again, it's in blue mode, so it's in overdub mode. I don't want that. I'm gonna just press that again, get it back into yellow for playback mode. That's in playback mode, so it didn't record. My mistake. Still a bit flaky. <laughs> Let's do it again. Bit of groove on that one. Okay, so it's still recording, so press that again. You can do this on a foot pedal as well, of course. Let's record that in. cycle and I and once that's undone I then have the, the cycle before that that I can undo and so on so it, it takes it back in layers think of an onion and each layer of that onion you can kind of peel back uh, one by one okay I'm not going to do that I'm happy with the sound the button below then will just completely wipe the buffer so anything that's recorded in there will we'll lose 
So that's something to be aware of as well. So, what else can we do? Well, we've set up some buttons here as well. I can't even remember what they do now. <laughs> uh, I think it'll... There, half the length. Now, once we half that length, it doesn't go back up again by the looks of it. Which is unfortunate. Now, can I undo? Nah, it's got its limits. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe everything by pressing that one button now. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that you can do with this. It can be used in multiple different ways. Um, but I just find that really interesting. You know, one kind of guitar loop and you can just basically do so, so much. So um, that's that. So I want to show you now how to kind of work it within Ableton. So if you want to record this, um, if, you want to, if you want to use the looper, in Ableton and not have an external input coming in to trigger like a guitar, that's fine. You can do that as well. So let's hop in and have a look at that. So uh, that's also quite simple and straightforward. I'm just going to delete this one. We don't need it anywhere. And I'm just going to open up the exact same thing again. Um, okay, so we've got a fresh looper in there now. So before we were using audio from an external input, <clears throat> but now what we can do is we can use audio from um, let me just uh, get these out of the way as well. We're going to grip grips. Right, so essentially this is the channel here now that we're going to use. And just before that, I'll open up uh, a synth or something like that. So say if we go for instruments and uh, let's go for wavetable for the fun of it. And the only thing that I'm going to do in here is just grab the envelope and make it nice and plucky. Um, see how that works. Fine. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this channel. So this is going to be the looper channel. And essentially, I'm going to get that looper channel to listen to this channel here, which is uh, 15 wavetable, right? So audio from 15 wavetable. So now if I monitor the input, very important. If you do not do this, this will not work. Make sure that you've monitored the input on. Now this is coming into this channel, right? We don't even need to hear it in this channel, to be honest. Um, or do we need to have that on? Oh, yeah, we might do. That's fine. Uh, so we don't essentially need to hear it on this channel, I guess. Um, so what, what I'm going to do is um, maybe record. Well, actually, no, we can just do a, a live jam. Right, OK, so uh, same thing. I'm going to get this ready. So uh, record one bar. Uh, set the global quantization and I'm going to follow song tempo and then after a one bar recording it's going to overdub automatically I want it to just play automatically okay so that's fine and here we are this feedback function too it's worth mentioning every cycle um, it can reduce the level uh, of the recording so say for example if you record a one bar loop in here and then after the one bar the next cycle that it goes through do you want it to play at 100% of that level that was that it was recorded at, or do you want it to play less and less and less? If you do, you can set that here as well. You can also, in this um, this option here, basically you can set your input and output options. So uh, I set the always, uh, the input signal is always heard, so you're always gonna hear that input signal. If it's set to never, you never hear the input signal, you just hear the end result. And then you also have a few other options as well. So you record over. So this is input only audio um, when recording or, or overdubbing, right? So that's quite handy as well. Or else you have record over stop. So uh, the input is heard except when the looper plays. So you've got multiple different options there and you can decide uh, which one you want to go with. Now, I'm just keeping it as it is for now. But uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit record. And now you'd set the playback, so I'd be clicking this again. So again, the blue is overdub. So then whenever I'm ready. So if I want to hear that back. There we go. So it's in the looper now. So if I want to just try something else, I'm going to come out of that. So. Overdub. 
Facebook slash Kapodawat and Just gonna come out of that again. I didn't realize I was down that far. I don't know how I done that. So let's go down one octave, take the um, reverb and delay off, and then press play. Mm, that's really nice. Next one, I'm gonna ju I'm gonna duplicate the first one again, and then I'm gonna drag this over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pitch this up an octave, but I'm gonna shorten the length uh, to a half a bar. Let's play that. <laughs> oh, lovely hours of endless fun. Okay, so. What you could do as well is you could get um, an auto pan in here. Pick up the amount, change the phase, set it to uh, global tempo, and then and then just set a gate essentially, so you're allowing things to come in and whatever division that you have here. Now, depending on what way you have this set up, will dictate how this works as well. So we have this set to a half a bar, which is eighths, isn't that right? So these should be in sync now, because we have this set to eighth notes, if that makes sense. You can kind of offset a wee bit too. Get some kind of groove in there. Yeah. This is with it off. Both are nice. What you could do is this, if you're that way inclined, you could grip this, duplicate the chain, and then have one going one way and one going the other. So like... Pan one this way and one the other way. Alright, so you get the nice kind of syncopated feel there. Endless, absolutely endless. I'm really enjoying this. Don't know about you. Flashback of Fallard Head there, uh, with the guy playing the jungle music, holding the, uh, the boombox, saying, I have had my fun, and that's all that matters. Yeah, I think you know what I'm saying. Let's bring in some EQ. Or echo. So, what do we pick here? Eighths and half notes. Don't have to do this. Experiment on at this stage. Ping pong it. Get a little wider. Oh, I could just sit and listen to that for so long. So hopefully you're kind of getting the idea now what you can do with these. So say for example if you wanted to uh, you know kind of record these now in the loops and you want to get those pitched down versions. Um, instead of dragging this out, you can try that and see if you've any more success than I do. But I, I haven't had any success when that's uh, you know, when I have it pitched down, maybe I'm missing something, I'm not sure. But uh, you just open up another channel and record the audio from this channel, and then that'll give you your pitch down versions exactly the same as what we've done before, essentially. So, I wonder will some of these work together? They should do, everything's in C. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, they did do some variations there as well, of course. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. There's just so much you can do with that. And that's just a one-bar loop, essentially, that made uh, all of that. Or two one-bar loops, if you know, if you want to just count the, the synth and the guitar separately. So I think that's everything for now. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next tutorial. See ya. Thank you.